Does analog FPV have more range than digital FPV? Is a question I get asked on my channel all the time, and it seems that the answer isn't super well explained anywhere. Well, I'm Chad Rains, and this is another one of my no-nonsense reviews and tutorials. To make things simple, we're just gonna explain two different scenarios. One where analog clearly wins the range test and the other where digital clearly wins the range test. If you're out in a completely unobstructed area, standing at the top of a mountain and you're flying straight off into the abyss with absolutely no obstacles, in that case, analog clearly smokes digital. It'll go for hundreds and hundreds of miles, no exaggeration. But let's say you're in a highly obstructed area, like trying to fly a drone through a big piece of real estate with lots of walls, lots of concrete, and stuff like that. Or trying to drive an FPV RC car through your neighborhood, where there's lots of houses and you're driving right near the road, which can get you in trouble with the Fresnel zone. Typically, digital is going to win that one hands down. And that's why you see it featured on my channel so often here. But today we're taking a look at this bad boy, which is the AKK Alpha Video Transmitters, and it has a little trick up its sleeve. See, most digital video transmitters, they're going to max out between one to two watts. Analog, however, is not subject to the same type of limitations. This is the AKK Alpha 10 and it has 10 watts of output power, a full five times more power than the Waxnail GT, but I'm sure it's not going to have five times the range. And that's because the digital protocols like DJI and Waxnail use this really fancy trick where if the signal starts to get weak, they resend the signal, they resend the packet. And that adds a little bit of latency, but it keeps the picture clear in your goggles. Today, we're gonna find out if analog can brute force through this and get the same range as these digital protocols with power alone. And first, we need to jump into an unboxing so you can see everything these video transmitters come with. Fresh out of the box, we have a chonky VTX module with a big heat sink and a fan on the back, though I don't think that fan is gonna be enough to cool this on an FPV car. Next up, we have the wiring harness and a coaxial antenna extension. That would be helpful if you needed to mount your antenna a little farther away from the VTX. We have the manual. And as a thanks for doing the review, AKK sent me a couple of extra long antennas. As you know, tall antennas are key in getting the most range that you can. And I wanted to show just how easy it is to get one of these analog video transmitters set up. So let's get right into it. First, we plug in the wiring harness and we pull out our negative and positive wires for input. The wires are all labeled right on the video transmitter and in the manual. The next wire up is for smart audio. It's the green wire and I won't be using it for this build. The remaining three wires are for your camera. I wanna make sure that I attach this antenna right away because it's such a powerful video transmitter that if I forget for whatever reason and I power it up without an antenna, it will fry pretty much instantly. Yes, a video transmitter will fry if you power it up without an antenna on. So really quick, we're gonna solder on a connector and get this connected to a power supply, just so I can give you a quick demo on how to use it. So we'll go ahead and power up this VTX with no camera wired up yet and I'll show you how to use it. I do want to mention that this video transmitter gets really hot, and I highly recommend that you have a fan on this thing, even if you have it powered up in low power mode. So here you can see that I've held down the button for six seconds, which allows me to unlock its full power output. And now that I got that taken care of, I'm going to switch the band from A over to R, which has the biggest channel separation and the one I recommend most people use. Now I'll just power down my power supply and check that heat sink to see how hot this thing got. And it's definitely toasty. This thing is going to need an extra fan if we're gonna do a range test with it. This stuff here is called dual lock. It's like Velcro, but with a little more magic. People ask all the time, 
how do I build my FPV cars? What's the installation look like? And usually it is quick and dirty. Watch me slap this on the bottom of the VTX, bust out a hot glue gun, and literally hot glue this camera to another piece of dual lock. Now you can find really clean built FPV RC cars on my channel, but not all of them start out that way. A lot of times I just slap components on something, test them and see how they go. And in this case, that's exactly what I'm doing. Now you may have noticed earlier that I added a fan to the video transmitter and I also added a regulator to the power wires. And that regulator is not needed at all. I'm gonna be using a three cell battery. I only added that regulator in case I wanted to try to power this from a higher voltage, like say a six cell LiPo. So boom, we got the camera installed and this little part right here adds five horsepower. And next we're gonna install the video transmitter. And yeah, for real, it is that easy. Now I'm gonna slap this three cell LiPo on the very back here. And that is how I'm gonna power the FPV system. The only other modification that I've made to this vehicle is I have an Express LRS receiver, which paired with the MT-12 radio will give me plenty of range. Okay, we got the car just over there. And now I'm actually gonna interrupt myself to do a voiceover because I can make things more clear that way. I'm just kind of explaining that I'm using a rapid fire receiver in my goggles, along with a couple of good antennas from True RC one directional and one omnidirectional so that I can get good range behind myself and directly in front of myself. I'll link everything in the description so you can see what I use. Another quick note is you can tell that the resolution of this video is not as good as some of the other videos that I've posted. And that's because this is analog video, a less expensive system than a lot of the other systems that I test. You'll notice that as soon as I go around this corner, we start to get some distortion in the video image. And this is just standard with analog. It's what to be expected, but it's still fully drivable. We can definitely see where we're going, so I will push on. So at this point, I've cleared it for a one block of range. Some of the other systems have been able to encompass four blocks of range. We'll see how this one does. So at this point, there are actually a lot of houses in my direct line of sight. And most 800 milliwatt video transmitters give up right about here. At this point, we can see that the video is getting a little bit clearer because we've come on the other side of all of those houses. The video is perfectly drivable, but I'm not sure if we would have been able to get here if we were flying. And that's the reason I like to do these range tests with FPV cars, because it shows what you're really going to see and how far you can push it before it totally gives up. At this point though, the car is directly behind me and a bunch of houses, and my directional antenna is pointed the other way, so I'm not gonna have the best clarity. But I made it around the difficult block, so we'll mark this good for 1.52. So now we're gonna do something that is really difficult for analog. We are going to drive down into a valley. So right away you can see that there is a big difference when you have a hill in the way. I have to drive really slowly because I can't barely make out where I'm going. I wouldn't really consider this flyable unless there is absolutely no obstacle in your way. And this type of issue with the video would only be apparent if you were flying if you were miles and miles away. Again, a reason I like to test with RC cars, because I can see where the limits are without even going that far. Now, right now, I'm thinking that I'm gonna try to do the far back block. And I'm immediately realizing that this is not gonna work. The video may 
actually make it, but no, no, I can tell. I need to come back. Now, I've got a confession to make. That entire range test was done with the Alpha 5 and not the Alpha 10. It got to the exact same point that the DJI V1 system gets to with power alone, which is pretty awesome. The DJI 03 system does typically get around that block, though sometimes the VTX gets too hot and it can't, and my range is drastically shortened because of it. If you'd like to see my other range tests, just check out the links in the description. If you'd like to see me do a full range test with the Alpha 10, just tell me in the comments section. I plan on doing a range test with the Woxnail system and maybe even HD0, though I have to be honest, HD0 isn't going to have the same type of performance that the other systems will. As always guys, thank you for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.